take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord, and looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul, each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service above. Father in heaven, you are the Lord, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, immortal, invincible, the only wise God. You are God that sits in heaven and you made the whole earth your full stool. We adore you. We bow before you. We reference you, O Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all adoration, all the worship. O Lord, the hour is here for you to speak to us. We pray, O Lord, we are here to hear you speak. Have your way in our midst in Jesus' name. Spirits of the living God, take charge, take control, let your will be done in Jesus' name. We turn over the whole conference, the whole come grant unto you. Father, this message will commit unto your hands. The Lord will prove yourself almighty. You will speak to every one of us and our lives shall not remain the same in the name of Jesus. Father, all this will be done to the glory of your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Have your way. Take control. Let your will be done. Take your residence here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Please let's sit down. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you turn to the program on in your, in your hands, the topic we are going to be speaking on now says cleansing from sin through God's word and Christ's blood. Can we say that? Amen. Cleansing from sin through God's word and Christ's blood. Amen. First of all, we want to look at what is cleansing. When you say cleansing from sin, what is cleansing? Cleansing means to make pure, to make clean, to make new, to make whole, not 99%. That no death is in it. It is free of death. Pure. Undefiled. Undefiled. Guiltless. Hallelujah. Cleansing means to be pure. To be guiltless. You will not have that guilt again. There will be no death found in you. You will be pure inside and outside. Amen. Please let's open our Bibles to the book of John. John chapter 17. I will read verse 17. John 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is the truth. The word of the Lord is truth. The word of the Lord is true. Is the word of the Lord that will sanctify you. 
the word of the Lord is truth. You need to be pure. You need to be poor for you to make it to heaven. You cannot, make, you cannot just make heaven sitting down doing nothing. No. You must be pure. You must be poor. You must be cleansed from your sin if you ever want to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. God, you must be cleansed from the sin through God's word and Christ's blood. You must be made whole. When we say you must be made whole, that means 99% is not acceptable. To be made whole means 100%. So 99% is not acceptable for you to see the Lord. You must be made whole. You must live an undefiled life. You must live an undefiled life before you can get to heaven. Amen? Let's take for example, maybe some of us, we are here. You know the background where you came from, how polluted it is, how contaminated that background is. Therefore, you must need the thorough cleansing from sin through God's word and by the shedding of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you must be thoroughly cleansed for you to be able to understand what holiness means. Because for you to know holiness, you must be thoroughly cleansed through God's word and through the shedding of the blood of our Lord Jesus jesus christ so that your eyes will be open to the doctrine of holiness for such to totally understand what it means to make heaven amen so first we're going to look what does the word of god do the word of god what does god's word do amen god's word cleanses the word of the lord cleanses the word of god is shaping your life as a, as a believer, as a holy sister, the word of God will shape your life. It will guide your feet constantly, every day, every time. The word of God will guide your feet constantly on these narrow paths because we are treading on the narrow path. Hallelujah. The word of God will guide you on this narrow path and it will guide you to the end. If you faint not. Please let's open to the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 119. Psalm 119. Verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my paths. Amen. The word of God makes way for you. The word of God is the light that shines on your path. It's the, word, it's the light that shines on your path. If someone is walking in darkness, maybe in the night, and there is no electricity, if you don't have the light, either torch light or flashlight or candle, you may not see clearly. You may not see clearly. But when you have a torch light, a lantern or candle, you will be able to see, so you will not stumble. But if you don't have the light, you will surely stumble, especially when you don't know your ways around. Amen? So, the word of God is the light that shines on your path, so that you will not stumble. Amen? Because start meditating and studying of God's word will cleanse you from sin. Cause that meditating and studying of God's word will cleanse you from sin. If, if, you, if, if you have the word, if you have the word of God in you now, that conquers. If you don't have the word, you stumble to sin. But if you have the word of God, that will help you to conquer. That will give you victory. But if you don't have the word of God, you stumble. Because the word of God is the light that shines on our path. It is the word that you should meditate upon day and night. Amen. 
We were all born sinners before Christ saved us. According to the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, that says, For all have sinned, all, everyone. We were all born sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, our salvation, yes, our sins are forgiven. You confess your sin genuinely, your sins are forgiven. But then there are still some inv invaded sin in you, that Adamic nature. But when you continue to study the word of God, when you continue to dwell upon the word of God, when you dwell in the word of God, day and night, constantly meditating and studying God's word, he will set you free. He will cleanse you from all sin. That Adamic nature we go in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to read again from the book of 2 Timothy. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2. I'll read verse 15. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth it says study to show yourself approved it is when you study the word of god that you will know what to, when to use it at the appropriate time study the word of god to show yourself approved unto god you must dwell on god's word to be able to use them when necessary you know because we are in the battlefield we need God's word to fight the battle. So when you dwell upon the word of God, he will help you to fight the battle when necessary. God's word makes us perfect in Christ. The word of God makes us perfect in Christ. Like your mommy said before this morning, in the book of James chapter 2 verse 10, that when you offend in one point, when you offend in one point, you are guilty of all. So your perfection must be complete. Not that um, I'm 70% I'm perfect or I'm 99% perfect. No. Your, it shall be complete, 100% perfection. That is what will make you to see God. Anything short of that, you cannot see God. You cannot see him. So, God's word makes you perfect. Amen. What does the word of God do? What does God's word do? The word of God is a hammer. The word of God is a hammer. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. 23, I'll be reading verse 29. 23, verse 29. He says, Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a, as a fire, seeth the Lord, and like a armor that breaketh the rock in pieces? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like an armor that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word of God is like an armor. The armor that breaks every stony heart away. That armor which will break every stony heart away. It will break it into pieces. The word of God is a hammer. He will break every stony heart away. He will strengthen your life. The word of God will strengthen your life. And your conscience will be strengthened. Amma will strengthen your life. He will strengthen your conscience. Crushing everything that is evil within you. It says the word of God. He will crush everything that is evil in your life. Everything that is evil within your heart, the word of God will crush it. It is like a hammer. It is like an armor 
to convince. The word of God will convince you. He will make you to know that indeed you have transgressed. Indeed you have sinned. The word of God is a hammer. Hallelujah. In that same passage in the book of Jeremiah 23 verse 29. The first word there says, it is not my word like as a fire. So the next one, the, what the word of God can do is that the word of God, it is a fire. The word of God is a fire. In that same book of Jeremiah 23 verse 29. The fire that burns the works of flesh out of your life. We all know that fire burns. The word of God is like a fire that burns every work of flesh out of your life. That is the word of God. That is what God's word can do. He will burn off that flesh away in your life. A great purifier. The word of God is a great purifier that purifies. He purifies that which is evil. That which is evil in your life will go away. That which is good will remain. He purifies. He will, the word of God is the purifier that destroys all that is false so that you can be true. Everything that is false in you, the word of God will purify it and, and lose only the truth in your life hallelujah the word of god is a fire that refines the soul the word of god is a fire that refines the soul your soul will be refined you will have peace with yourself you will have peace with god you will have peace with your fellow brethren the word of god is a refiner that refines the soul. Amen. Also, what can the word of God do? Or what do we liken the word of God? The word of God is like a mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. In the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. The word of God is a mirror. Verse 23. James chapter 1, verse 23 says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like unto a man, Beholding his natural face in a glass. I will read that again. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You see there. God's word is a mirror. Because when you go to the mirror, a mirror sees its blemishes. A mirror, it will point that blemish out from you. You will, you will see it. A mirror sees its blemishes. A mirror sees its imperfections. A mirror sees its imperfections. A mirror sees its errors. The errors you have made or the errors you are making. The, the mirror sees it and is moved by what it sees. Because, for example, when you go to a mirror and look at yourself, and you see maybe a bump somewhere, we're like, oh, what's this? You see? So a, a mirror is moved by what it sees. The mirror shows you your wrong, your wrongdoings. A mirror shows you clearly your wrongdoings. The mirror is the one we can reflect on. And that is the word of God. The word of God is like a mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. So it's the mirror that we reflect on. It's, it's the one that will show you your error. When you read the word of God, you will know that, oh, 
I've been wrong all along. He will show you your error. He will show you your wrong. And he will perfect your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, the word of God is power. The word of God is power. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You must believe and stand upon it. You must believe and stand upon God's word because it is power and strength for your soul. You believe it. If you are studying a book and you don't believe in it, it will not profit you anything. But when you believe in the word of God, it profits your soul. Believe and stand upon it. Wherever, will, no matter the situation, you believe God's word and you stand upon God's word. That is when it becomes power unto you. That is when it becomes power unto you. The word of God strengthens your soul. The word of God strengthens your soul. It will strengthen your spirit and your body. Hallelujah. The word of God energizes you. The word of God energizes you. The word of God gives you assurance and hope. Because when you're down in the spirits or you're passing through some difficulties, when you pick the word of God, he will speak to you. God will speak to you himself through his word. The Lord will speak to you himself through his word. He gives you assurance. He gives you hope to move on. To forge your head. Hallelujah. It's great power. It's power to create faith and eternal life. The word of God will create faith. As we have read it in the book of Romans 10, 17. It will create that faith in you. The, your faith will arise. Your faith will be increased. Your faith will grow to another level. From stage to stage. And the word of God gives eternal life. The word of God gives eternal life. Also, we're going to look at it that the word of God, it is water. The word of God, it is like water. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 says, That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word of God. The word of God is water. It is like water that convinces. The water will convince you. He will sanctify you and cleanse you thoroughly from sin. The word of God will cleanse you thoroughly from sin and it will cleanse you from all guilt. The word of God will cleanse you from all guilt. It will sanctify you only. The word of God will sanctify you only. It will sanctify you pure, righteous, upright in heart. Having a new birth. That's, the, that's what the word of God can do. And much more. Having a new birth. Amen. That's what, what the word of God can do. Even much more. If you have not experienced any of this. Or you have, you have experienced some but not all. Then you need to have it today. By the grace of God. You need it today by prayer. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Cleansing from sin through God's word and Christ's blood. In, the, in Christ's blood, first you must be cleansed from sin through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
we must be cleansed from sin through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, let's please open to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. Chapter 9, I'll be reading 13 to 15. Hebrews chapter 9, I'll read it from verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the arches of the infer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, Put your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for, the, for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, the which are called mighty, received the promise of eternal life. I will quickly read verse 22 now. The same chapter of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of the blood is no remission amen without shedding of the blood there is no remission if the blood of bulls and goats because in the Old Testament our own, they were sacrificing goats, bulls, and all that, shedding that blood for the remission of their sin. But we thank God for the blood that our Lord Jesus Christ, the ancients of days, the one who has been before the creation of the old universe, came in the human form and died for our sin. He shed his blood. How much more that blood in verse 14? How much more shall the blood of Christ who through eternal spirits offer himself without spots to God. You see? Jesus that was without sin, yet he became sin for us. He was without sin, he became sin for us. His blood already has been shed for the remission of our sin, of your sin, of my sin. His blood already has been shed on the cross of Calvary. So, it is much more available today if you can call on him to cleanse you with his blood. Without the shedding of this blood, your sin cannot be forgiven. Without the shedding of Christ's blood, we will not be here today. If Jesus did not come, if Jesus did not die, if he did not rise up again the third day, we will not be gathered here today. We are here because of his blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary for you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. What can we derive from or in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? What can we derive in or from the blood of Christ, our Lord? Amen. We receive power. We receive power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The power that the enemy cannot contend with. The power that the enemy will see and, and run away. We receive power in the blood of Jesus that sustains us. That power will sustain you and I. Hallelujah. That power will give us strength. Because on this narrow path, we need God's strength. We cannot do this on our own strength. The arm of flesh will fail us, definitely, absolutely. But the power of God, when you rely solely on his power, it will sustain you. It will sustain you, it will strengthen you. It will give you strength. It will empower you. Hallelujah. You will be empowered. Also, what can we derive? You have total victory. Through the blood of Christ. Total victory. You will have it. 
through the blood that Jesus Christ, our Lord, has shed for us. Total victory. I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know that that is in your mind. You I don't know what you have been believing God for. But there is victory in the blood of Jesus. Have you been tormented for so long? There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Have you been in that bondage for so long? The victory is here today in Christ's blood. Hallelujah. Also, there is protection in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is protection in the blood that our Lord Jesus Christ has shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Whenever you need him, just call on him. He will protect you. Divine protection, no one can find it elsewhere but in the blood of Jesus. That is where and when you can find the, blood, the protection for your soul, for yourself, for your husband, for your children. Hallelujah. There is salvation in the blood of Jesus. In fact, without it, like I said, you won't be here. You see, when you come through the, we all came through the blood of Jesus. You already have shed his blood. There is salvation in the blood of Jesus. If you are here, you have not yet given your life to Christ, the blood of Jesus will save you today because you already has paid the price. The price already has been paid for you so that you will not die eternal death. Hallelujah. There is cleansing in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is cleansing in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Christ's blood revitalizes. You know, like some people, when they are sick, they are in the hospital. They will say some of them may need blood. It will revitalize you. It will energize you. Christ's blood revitalizes you. He gives you new strength. He gives you new life, new hope. The hope for tomorrow. He revitalizes. That is what Christ's blood can do. It quickens you and makes you a brown new person. Hallelujah. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ quickens you and makes you a brown new person. Purging you by the blood of Christ is needed. Purging by the blood of Christ is needed to totally free from sin. If you want to be totally free, you must be purged by the blood of the Lamb. If you are not poured by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be totally free from sin. You will see yourself rising and falling. Rising and falling. Rising and falling. But the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he purchases you, you will see yourself rising every day. You will be totally free. You will be totally cleansed. And be free from sin. Amen. The blood was shed to remove us from sin. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed to redeem us from sin. Let's open to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. I will be reading verses 6 and 7. 1 John chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah. If we say we have fellowship with him, if you say you have been identified with our Lord Jesus Christ, you must live above all sin. You must live above all sin. Because if you say you are a child of God, you are a holy sister, and you walk in darkness, the Bible says you lie. The Bible says you lie. Because 
the truth is not in you. So if you walk in the light, because Christ is light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood that Jesus Christ has shed, he cleanses you from all sin, not partial sin. All sin, no matter how big, or how great, or how red, or how black that sin may be. The, blood, the word of God says, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin. It is only the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. There is no sin too big, no matter what, that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. All sin. The blood will cleanse all sin. Amen. His blood can, can cleanse every sinner. The blood of Jesus Christ. He will cleanse every sinner that calls on him. When you call upon the Lord, his blood will cleanse you from all sin. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will cleanse every sinner. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse every backslider. Every backslider. Don't deceive yourself. The blood of Jesus is still available for you. The blood of Jesus is still here. The time of grace is still now. This is the time of grace while the blood is still efficacious. So the blood of Jesus will cleanse you and restore you through that backslider. He will restore you today in Jesus' name. Amen. It will cleanse you from all guilt. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all guilt. It will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all unrighteousness and makes you whole. The blood of Jesus Christ will make you whole. Will make me whole. That blood of Jesus, because there is perfection in heaven. And without perfection, you cannot go there. The standard of heaven is still the same from the beginning of the world. Up to today, up to, to tomorrow. The standard of heaven can never be lower than for you. It is still very high. It is still very, very high. The Lord will not lower his standard for this generation. No. Because his word can never change. His word is ever true. So the standard of heaven can never be lowered for anyone. You have to come up to the standard. You must live where you are and come up to the standard where you belong so you can get to heaven. You must come up to the standard of heaven. Hallelujah. So you can be made whole through the blood of Jesus. If you are made whole through the blood of Jesus, heaven is guaranteed for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The blood of Jesus will deliver you from backsliding. The blood of Jesus Christ our Lord will restore you from backsliding. Because if you know yourself, you know how you began. You know where you are today. You know it. You can't deceive yourself. You may deceive others. But you know it's yourself that you are backsliding. If you are backsliding, there is no heaven for you. But thank God, the blood of Jesus is now available. It is never too late for you to apply that blood of Jesus into your life. To claim that blood of Jesus. To cleanse you from all sin. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus will restore you from backsliding. It will restore you from worldliness. Some of our sisters, even the way you tie your head, your head gear sometimes, there is this altar of worldliness still in you. If you still have worldliness, if you are still copying the world, you cannot please God. You cannot get to heaven. No way. You tie your hair so, hair tie so big, the fancy one, what for? Some people will put something inside the head so that when they tie their hair, it will look funny. Please, let's stop this. 
Let us, I've seen some of our sisters, please, let us stop this. Be natural. God did not say, oh, my head is too small. Oh, my head is too big. You are, making, you are, you are condemning God that he didn't make you well. Even though you have come to holiness. Please, let not the devil cheat us of, of, of heaven. Please, let us stop it. We will put something inside before we tie our egg gear. What for? Don't deceive yourself. If you want to go to heaven, be natural the way God has made you. We get rid of worldliness in your life. Hallelujah. And many of us unbelieve. Unbelieve. You don't believe a thing. Unless you see it, doubting Thomas. Or doubting Thomases. You want to touch that place. Where is the mark? I want to see the mark before I believe. I want Jesus to come and talk to me himself. Before I believe. No. He is speaking to you right now. He has sent many to you already. Hallelujah. So the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Many of our sisters today, the Lord will deliver you from backbiting. Backbiting. The blood of Jesus is available for you to cleanse yourself from backbiting, sister. It is high time we stopped. It is high time we stopped. Amen. The blood of Jesus will help you even to stop gossiping and so many other things that is making you to go back. Instead of you moving forward, you see yourself going backward. You know, it's, it's not a good sign. Immediately you realize yourself, recover yourself immediately. When you see it, that, oh, what is going on with me? This is not the way I was last week. This is not the way I was last month. This is not the way I was last year. Be sure something is wrong with you. Get yourself back immediately from backsliding. Hallelujah. You must call on him today for total cleansing. You have to call on Christ today for total cleansing from sin because his judgment is coming. God's judgment is coming for everyone that will not repent. If you refuse to repent after you have known this truth and you are, you are still deceiving yourself, you are just following people. Okay, we are going to the holiness campground. Let's go. Let's go and see what is happening. As we have come to see what is happening, you will be arrested here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You must call on God today and set yourself free. You must set yourself free from all filthiness. You must set yourself free from all sin. Because if you have any sin in you, there is no heaven. Like we said earlier, if you offend in one point, you are guilty of all. James chapter 1 verse 10. Amen. Therefore, you have to call upon the Lord. Because his judgment is fierce. You cannot face God's judgment. You cannot face his judgment. His judgment is fierce. And his judgment is surely coming upon the sinners. His judgment is coming. But we thank God there is free gift of salvation available to us today. We thank God for the gift of the blood that our Lord Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary for you and I that is still available today. The free gift of salvation is still available for you and I. Eternal life through Christ's blood. Yes, you can find. Eternal life through Christ's blood. You can find that. There is free of salvation. Free gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please let's read our Bible again. The book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I will be reading verses 19 to 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from 19 to 21. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. 
and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are only verses of gold and of silver. There are not only verses of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21. If any man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth those that are his. If, if you are still pretending, the Lord knows. If you are still pretending, the Lord knows. Or maybe your own, maybe it's eye service. Now you see your coordinator coming. You begin to run up and down. Eye service, you cannot go to heaven. You can't go to heaven with eye service. The Lord knows where those that are is. The Lord sees the intent of the heart. He sees that motives in your heart. Even the, the thought of your heart. The Lord knows. You cannot hide it from God. He sees everything. He knows everything. He said, let everyone the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Because you are of Christ, you must depart from iniquity. You must depart from iniquity because anything that is not pure in you, if you are not thoroughly cleansed through God's word and Christ's blood, you cannot get to heaven. You cannot get to heaven with that. You must purge yourself before you can get to heaven. You must purge yourself before you can see God. In verse 20 it says, there is In a great house, there are not only verses of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Which vessel do you want to be? What kind of a vessel do you want to be, sister? Is it a vessel of gold or that of wood? For me, I prefer to be used as vessel of gold. And I know you want to be used as vessel of, of gold. For you to be qualified to be a vessel of gold, you must put yourself to God's word and Christ's blood. And some to honor and some to dishonor. My prayer for you, my sister, this morning is that the Lord will use you as vessels unto honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, if a man therefore purge himself, that means you have to cleanse yourself first. You must purge yourself first. You must cleanse yourself first. Cleansing through God's word and Christ's blood. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet, hallelujah, and meet for master's use. The Lord wants to use every one of us. Our Father in the Lord was saying that yesterday, when he was giving us the message, that the Lord wants to use every one of us, but you must make yourself available and be cleansed thoroughly before the Lord will use you. Already his spirit, his power has been poured out, but he's looking for those that are qualified. He's looking for those that are vessels unto honor. I pray you will find that in you today in the mighty name of Jesus so that we can be meet for master's use. So that the Lord can depend on you. The Lord can say, have you seen my daughter? Have you, have, you, have you seen what she's doing for me lately? So that the Lord can be proud of you and showcase you like he did for Job. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will prepare us for every good work. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the book of First John, please let's open our Bibles to the book of First John, chapter three. I will be reading verses eight and nine. First John, chapter three, verses eight and nine. He says, "He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose." The Son of, man, of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Hallelujah. He that committed sin is of the devil, and we don't want to belong to the devil. We want to belong to God. We want to belong to Christ. We want, the, we want to belong to our Lord Jesus. Because he already has shed his blood for us. He has paid the, the price on the cross of Calvary for you and I. The price has been paid. The blood has been purchased. Your eternal life has been paid for. All you need to do is to come to him and ask of him. That is all you need to do. He already has paid the price. He said, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. I pray for you, sister, today you will repent of your sin in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because for this purpose, the Son of God came. He came to make he made himself manifested that the work of the devil might be destroyed. The work of the enemy might be destroyed in your life and grants you eternal life. That is the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and I. He has shed his blood so that the works of the devil in your life will be destroyed and grant unto you eternal life. He says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You should still find yourself in one sin or the other, you are not of God. You are not born of God. Because if you are born of God, you will not commit sin. For the seed of God will remain in you. The seed of Christ will remain in you if you are born of him. If you are born of Christ, the seed will remain in you. You cannot sin because you are born of Christ. I pray for you today. If you have not been born of Christ, you will be born of him today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He that committed sin is of the devil. Whosoever is of God, he does not commit sin. He does not commit sin. Sisters, the seed of Christ must remain in you. The seed of Christ must remain in you. Amen. Please let's open to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. I'll read verse 27. Revelation 21 verse 27 says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the last book of life. There shall be no wise enter into it. Enter where? Into heaven. There shall be no wise enter into heaven. If you have any defilement in you, there is no heaven. If you have any defilement in you, there is no heaven. Or whatsoever worketh abomination, there is no heaven or make it a lie. If you are still there deceiving yourself, there is no heaven for you. But I pray you be truthful to yourself today and accept this free gift of salvation and embrace this free gift of salvation and have eternal life. Because anything that defiles cannot go to heaven, cannot be in heaven. No sinner in heaven 
No angry person in heaven. No, no, no one that backbites in heaven. Or do, do you can fight very well. You can never get to heaven. Unless you repent. Unless you repent. Repentance is required of you today. Anything that work at abomination cannot be in heaven. There is no way. Because heaven is a holy place. Our Father is holy. Heaven is holy. The angels, they are holy. The saints in heaven, they are holy. We that we are here, you must be holy before you get there. Holiness is required for you to make heaven. Without it, we know the stories of the story. You cannot see God. Without holiness, you cannot see God. There is no abominable thing that we enter there. You must be pure in heart, pure in your body, outwardly and inwardly. You must be pure. And your name must be written in the book of life. Because on that day, the book will be opened. The book of life will be opened. They will flip through to look for your name. Is your name in the book of life? If your name is not yet in the book of life, I pray your name will enter into this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because nothing defiles that will get to heaven. Maybe you are invited here. If you are seeing any earrings, any jewelry, any attachments, or you are still bleaching your skin, you are still using perfume, you are still using those things that you are no longer natural, you are defiled. That thing you are using has defiled you. And your name can never be in the book of life unless you repent. Unless the repentance will come from you this morning. That is when your name can be written in the book, the last book of life. Amen. As we can see, many of us that we are seated here, many of us we are well dressed. We dress godly, outwardly, outwardly, outwardly. As we can see us, many of us, we do. There is no outward adornment. We, we look more godly. But what about that backsliding state of your heart? The backsliding state of your heart. What about it? What about the backsliding state of your heart? You must repent of that today. You must repent of that today. Many are seated here. You are not at any time sincerely giving your life to Jesus. You know it. Sincerely. You have not at any time given your life to Jesus Christ. Yet you are seated here. You are seated here. So you must receive Christ into your life before your name can be written in the last book of life. You must first of all surrender your life to Jesus. You must first of all surrender your life to our Lord Jesus Christ. His blood already has been shed for you. The blood of Jesus already has been shed for you. Do not allow this blood to be in vain over your life. Do not know Jesus Christ to the cross the second time by sinning. By continuing in sin. Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God will abound? God forbid. We can no longer continue in sin as holy sisters. We can no longer continue in sin. We must repent of them all. This morning, in the name of Jesus, his blood already has been shed for us. The price already has been paid. Will you allow his blood to be in vain? I want you to answer me. Will you allow the blood of Jesus to be in vain over your life? No. You must not be in vain over your life in the name of Jesus. But you must repent today. You must repent today and become a renewed woman. You must repent today and become a renewed woman. You must cleanse yourself from all sin today, not tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation. You are not here by any chance, by accident. It's not coincidence. It is God that has brought you here. Because he wants to save you. He wants to write your name in the book of life. He wants to see you in heaven. 
he has already shed his blood for you. So why would you allow it that to be in vain? You must be cleansed of your sin today. You must call on Christ. You must cry unto him for mercy today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want us to rise on our feet right now. I want us to rise on our feet. Let us rise up on our feet right now, please. Let's rise up on our feet in the name of Jesus. Because today you must repent and become a renewed woman. You must get rid of that wickedness. You must get rid of selfishness. You must get rid of backbiting. Backbiting. Bitterness in your heart. Envying. You are so envious of another woman, of another sister, of another person. You must repent of that today. Gossiping. Many of women, many of us, you talk too much. When you talk too much, you exaggerate. Let's learn to be quiet. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Let's learn to abide by that. Do not talk too much. When you have talked too much, later you'll be regretting it. Oh, I have exaggerated. Oh, I have lied. Oh, I'm not supposed to have said this. You know, let's not do that. We should grow on a daily basis. We have talked about the word of God that will help you to grow on a daily basis. You must get rid of jealousy. As we're saying this, we're talking to the Lord. You must get rid of jealousy. Get rid of pride in your life. Pride and arrogancy. Unforgiveness. Some of you, you cannot forgive. Oh, okay, I'm forgiving you. But that thing is still there inside of you. With that in your life, you cannot get to heaven. You must be thoroughly cleansed today through Christ's word and Christ's blood. You must be currently thoroughly cleansed today in the name of Jesus. Are you here? You want to surrender your life to Christ. You know you are, you are not at any time at all giving your life to Jesus. You have not at any time said, Lord, here am I. You are here in our midst. Today is the day of salvation. Oh, you are here, you are a backslider. You know it's in your heart, you already you are backslidden. You are no longer on the way. Begin to come out now and pour your heart out to the Lord. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, the other himself, come and give your life to Jim. Come and ask him for mercy. Ask Jesus Christ for mercy to cleanse you from all your sin. If you are a backslider, come and ask the Lord for mercy. For the Lord to recover you. For you to discover yourself. For you to recover yourself. For you to be cleansed of all sin. For you to the backsliding state of your heart to be restored. The Lord will restore you. The Lord will restore you. He will write your name in the book of life. If you want your name to be in the book of life, the other is here. The angels are here. They are writing names. The angels are writing the names in the book of life right now. We must confess all your sins unto the Lord. You must ask him for mercy. You must ask for blessing. You must ask him to cleanse you with his blood. The blood of Jesus is available now. The hour is here for you to pour your blood unto him, to cry unto him, to ask for mercy, to ask him to punch you, to ask him to cleanse you. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow might be too late. The hour of salvation is now. The hour of salvation is now. Cry unto the Lord. Cry for mercy. Cry unto him for mercy. And fire is very hot. Hellfire is still very hot. Hellfire is still very hot. My sister, don't go to hell. My sister, don't go to hell. The Lord Jesus has paid the price for you. The Lord Jesus has paid the price for you. He has purchased his blood. He has purchased you with his blood. He has bought you over with his blood. Do not get back without cursing of the blood of Jesus. You ask him to forgive you. Ask for the forgiveness of sin. Pick up your new life. Pick up your new life. You know yourself. He the trophy shall sound now. Will you rapture? Will you go with the rapture? Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. The hour of salvation is now. The hour of salvation is now. Ask God for mercy. Prior to him for 
for mercy. Cry out to him for mercy. Probably you are thinking you are a chapter leader, you are a leader here, and you know you are backsliding. You are deceiving yourself. If you don't come and rediscover yourself and recover yourself, recover yourself from backsliding. Recover yourself from backsliding. You know you are falling. You know you are falling. Recover yourself. Deliver yourself. The Lord is coming you now. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and serve with him and eat with me. The Lord is coming and knocking at the door of your heart this morning. The Lord is knocking at the door of your heart this morning. Will you open up to him? Will you open up to him? Will you open that door unto the Lord Jesus? Will you open the door of your heart to him by surrendering your life unto him today? By giving your life unto him today? By restoring you back to himself? By restoring you back to himself? Maybe you say you are a noble woman. For God to make you a renowned person, you must Christ yourself. Pray yourself. Ask for mercy. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask him. Repent now. Repent now. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Call upon him by his name. The Lord is here. The Lord is here now. Call upon you to forgive him. Call upon him to forgive you. Call upon him to forgive you. He is here. The angels are here. Write in your names in the book of life. Write in your names in the book of life. Do not let his blood be in vain over you. Do not let the blood of Jesus be in vain over your life. The Lord wants to transform you. The Lord wants to renew you. The Lord wants to make you whole. The Lord wants to set you free. The Lord wants you to be with him in heaven. The Lord wants you to be with him in heaven. The Lord wants to transform your life. He wants to make you a new woman. He wants to make you a new person. He wants to make you a renowned person. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. The Lord wants to make you a noble woman. He wants to make you a renowned woman. He wants to make you a renowned woman. Say, pass me not a gentle savior. Pass me not a gentle savior. Pass me not a gentle savior. The Lord wants to renew your heart. The Lord wants to renew you. The Lord wants to make you a brand new woman. The Lord wants to turn your life around. The Lord wants to turn your life to a new woman. A new daughter that he wants you to do. Before he can use you, he will cleanse you. He will purify you. He will cleanse you. He will make sure you are ready to be used of him. What shall he profit you if you gain the whole world? And you know this is your soul. What shall it profit you? To hold on to this world, to hold on to worldliness, to hold on to your backsliding state, and lose your soul in their fire. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want it. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. The Lord is said to hear your cry. Cry out to him for mercy. Cry out to him for mercy. Maybe you are a leader here. You are unfaithful. Tell us the Lord. Confess it to the Lord. That from today you will be faithful unto him. Cry out to him for mercy. Cry out to him for mercy. Stop nailing Jesus Christ to the cross again. Stop nailing Jesus Christ to the cross again. Stop letting Jesus Christ to the cross again. Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Cry for mercy. His mercy is here. His mercy is here. His mercy is available. The mercy of the Lord is available. Cry out to him. It's noble. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will save you. He will rest your name in the book of life. Cry unto him. Tomorrow is not promised, sister. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow may not come. Tomorrow may not come. Cry for mercy. 
The Lord is here to hear you cry unto him. The voice will cry unto him. Every man's word shall be tested by fire. What kind of service are you rendering in the presence of God? Every man's work will be tested by fire. Every man's work will be tested by fire. Whoa. What service are you rendering in the presence of the Lord? What kind of service are you rendering to the Lord? What kind of service are you rendering before the Lord? How fire is still very hot. Very, very hot. Don't go there. Don't go to hell fire. Don't go to hell fire. It is still very, very hot. Deliver yourself now. Deliver yourself now. Deliver yourself now. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do not pass me by. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. He has redeemed you with his own blood. He has purchased you with his own blood. Don't let his blood be in vain. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. He has redeemed you with his own blood. The blood of Jesus is available now. The blood of Jesus is available now. The blood of Jesus is available now. Cry now, Lord help me. Cry, Lord help me. I cannot help myself. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. I need your help. Set me free from the only backsliding sin. Set me free from all sin. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy, sister. Cry for mercy this morning. He's listening to you. The Lord is here. He's listening to you. The angels are here. They are writing your name in the book of life. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. His mercy is still available, sister. His mercy is still available. He will see you true. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We plead for mercy. Father, write their names in your book, O Lord. Write their names in your book, O Lord. Father, we plead for mercy. Mercy, Jesus. Mercy, Jesus. Mercy, Jesus. We plead for mercy, Lord. We plead for mercy for your children. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Continue to pray and ask the Lord to wash you with the blood of Jesus. The blood that flows from the Calvary. Where he lay himself, the blood is flowing. You have come to the Jesus, to the bleeding blood that flowed from the Calvary to wash you and cleanse you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, with your heart you shall believe, and with your mouth. You shall confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, personal Savior. Right this moment, 
I'm going to lead you now as you have come out boldly as you have believed that Jesus Christ is your Lord it shall be well with you so I want you to say after me Lord Jesus here I am please have mercy upon me I am a sinner blesses me wash me with your blood I believe that you are my Lord you are my Savior you die for my sin Lord I have come to you save me wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ Lord give me the power to be original the true child of God give me the power to live a righteous life to sin no more to hate sin and to love righteousness to live a holy life because the Bible says without holiness no one shall see the Lord Lord I want to be with you Lord I want to see you help me that I will be with you in Jesus name we pray almighty father here are your people that have come they have surrendered totally to you Lord Jesus they have dedicated themselves Lord once more oh Lord because without you there is no life no Jesus no life Lord as they have come I hand them over to you do as it pleases you Lord have mercy oh Lord it is it, it delight in you that you those you, you have died will come to you and I know in heaven are rejoicing for their sake because you did not delight in the death of a sinner when a sinner repented Lord it gives you joy here they are oh Lord give them the grace to live for you Jesus grant them the grace to live in holiness and righteousness to seek after you all the days of their life the Bible says seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all of that sin shall be added unto you Lord as they have come to Lord to you to seek you to surrender their life to Jesus to give themselves to you O Lord have your way in their life let your spirit come upon them O Lord any power contenting with their soul any power striving to take their soul by the power and authority in the name of Jesus I stand in the name of Jesus to set them free from that sin in the name of Jesus any power they have been dedicated to Lord by the reason of them committing to you today that covenant is broken in Jesus name a new covenant is made with the blood of Jesus Christ from henceforth let no power trouble them anymore they belong to you Jesus they are for you Jesus and they will remain with you Lord forever and for eternity in Jesus name we pray it's well with you believe it shall be well you believe in Jesus the message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4348. You can also reach us through our email address 
Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. You can.
Jesus, I'm. 